Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math, where we're going to master math one video at a time. Today, our lesson is on similar figures. Our objectives today are that you will name corresponding angles and corresponding sides of similar figures, and that you will be able to identify similar figures. You will also use what we learn about similar figures to find unknown measures. The question I'd like you thinking about today is, how can you use a proportion to determine if two figures are similar? Vocabulary. So we're talking about similar figures today. These are figures that have the same shape and are different sizes. So we've learned about congruent figures earlier in this unit, and congruent figures are exactly the same. Their corresponding sides are the same and their corresponding angles are the same. Similar figures are different because their corresponding sides are proportional. Their corresponding angles are the same, they are congruent. So we've talked about, if you've listened to previous videos, I often tell my students that let's think about an equilateral triangle. If I have one that's small enough to fit in the palm of my hand, all three angles are still 60 degrees each because it's an equilateral triangle and no matter how large a triangle is, all three angles add up to 180 degrees. Now if I constructed an equilateral triangle that was so big it could go around a house, it's still the three angles would have a sum of 180 degrees and each be 60 degrees. But because it's been increased proportionally and not been distorted, then we know that corresponding sides are going to be proportional. So here I have two right triangles. And we're going to talk about what it means to have corresponding sides that are proportional and corresponding angles that are congruent. So the first thing I want to look at is that our corresponding sides, we have side AB that corresponds to side DE. So we're making those to be a ratio. AB to DE forms a ratio. BC corresponds to EF. That's my second ratio. And when you're solving a problem, we only need two, but I'm going to show you that there's a third, and any two of these would work. So we also have side AC that corresponds to side DF. So notice that each one of these is a side from one triangle corresponding to the side of the other triangle. And then it goes in the same order, that all the in the numerator, they're all from this triangle, the smaller triangle, and the denominators are all the sides from the larger triangle. It doesn't matter which you put in the numerator and which you put in the denominator, it just as long as all the numerators are from the same triangle or a figure. So now let's look at the angles. Or sorry, I misspoke. Let's look at the sides. Let's prove why this works. So the ratio of three over six needs to be equal to the ratio of five to 10 and equal to the ratio of two to four. So three over six simplifies to one half, five over 10 simplifies to one half, and two over four simplifies to one half. So that means it's proportional. The last thing we need to check is our corresponding angles. Angle A corresponds to angle D and is they're both 90 degrees. Angle B corresponds to angle E, they're both 60 degrees. And angle C corresponds to angle F and they're both 30 degrees. So because all corresponding angles have congruent measures, we can now say that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. So this little sideways S means similar. Let's talk about a distorted image versus a similar image. So I'm hoping that you've all seen an image on a computer. And when you click on it, it brings up the little dots around it that you can make it bigger or smaller. So it would look something like this. Now this is the same image, but what happened is when I clicked on it, I took this point and I dragged it to the right to make it bigger. So I didn't increase it proportionally because I only increased the width. I dragged it and you can see it distorted my bitmoji. So these are not similar figures. Now 
if I take the picture and drag it down by just taking this point on the image, I've distorted it again. I've only increased the height of the image, and the Bitmoji is now longer or distorted, kind of like one of those mirrors you would see at a carnival or those filters you guys use on Snapchat. So these are not similar figures because I've distorted the image. So in order to keep a similar figure and not distort something, I have to pull it by one of the corners. So if I do that, you can see that I've enlarged this image and it looks the same, just larger. So I've increased the width and the length proportionally, creating a similar image. So proportionally means you're increasing the width and the height the same amount, the same rate. It might not be an inch and an inch, but you're increasing it so that the proportion, the ratios of the sides stay the same. All right, your turn. Now that we've talked about what similar figures are, I would like you to pause and determine which rectangle is similar to rectangle A. Is it rectangle B or rectangle C? And make sure you can defend your answer or explain your reasoning. Come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So first I'm going to check if rectangle A and B are similar. So I know that they're rectangles. So since they're all rectangles, they all have four right angles. We know that they're all the corresponding angles are congruent. So because all three are rectangles, I don't even need to deal with the angles. Now I just need to talk about corresponding sides. So three corresponds to two and six corresponds to six. These are our corresponding sides. So now I need to see if they're proportional. So I set up my proportion. The ratio of six to six is one pair of si corresponding sides. And then three to two is my second pair of corresponding sides. And to check to see if they're proportional, I'm gonna use the cross product property, which is six times two is 12, and six times three is 18. And since 12 does not equal 18, it's not true. You could also simplify. Six over six is equal to one, and we know that one is not equal to three halves. So therefore, we can conclude that rectangle B is not similar to rectangle A. So although that only leaves rectangle C to be the similar rectangle, we still need to be able to prove and explain and defend our answer. So let's make sure we know that it works. So. We now need to think about the corresponding sides. So six corresponds to the side that has a measure of four on rectangle C, and the side that's three in A corresponds to the side that measure of two in rectangle C. So now I'm ready to say that my corresponding sides, do they form a proportion? Six to four, is it equal to three over two? So we're gonna do cross product property again, 12, and four times three is 12, and 12 equals 12 it checks, or you could simplify this ratio to three halves, and three halves equals three halves. So there we have it. Rectangle A is similar to rectangle C because the corresponding sides are proportional and the corresponding angles are congruent. Now we can also use knowing that two figures are similar to find an unknown side. So they tell us in this problem that the triangles are similar. Seeing as they're telling us they're similar, we know that the corresponding angles are congruent and the corresponding sides are proportional. So we're gonna write a proportion to find this missing side. So here we go. Six corresponds to nine, eight corresponds to X. So here's our ratio, six over nine is equal to eight over X. We're gonna use cross product property, six times X is gonna be equal to eight times nine. Eight times nine is 72. Divide both sides by six and X is equal to 12. So our missing side is 12. Your turn. You're given that the two figures are similar and I'd like you to find X. Please pause, come back when you're done. Welcome back. So we're told they're similar, so we know that their corresponding sides are proportional. 
So 14 corresponds to 7 and x corresponds to 12. So your proportion should be 14 to 7 equals x over 12. Using the cross product property, we have 7 times x equal to 14 times 12. 14 times 12 is 168. Divide both sides by 7, and x is equal to 24. So x is 24. Your turn. You have a pan of fresh baked brownies, and it's in a 9 by 13 pan. You cut a brownie for yourself that is 3 inches by 4 inches. Is the brownie you cut for yourself similar to the entire pan of brownies? Please pause, be able to explain why or why not, and come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So imagining that proving and explaining, defending your answer is probably the hardest part. So when you're talking about similar figures, you always want to use a proportion. So here we have it, our pan of fresh, fresh baked brownies. I'm drawing a picture. My pan of brownies is nine inches by 13 inches. My brownie I cut was three inches by four inches. So now I can say that 9 corresponds to 3, and 13 corresponds to 4, and all I have to do is set up my proportion and do the cross product property to see if they're similar. So 9 over 3 must be equal to 13 over 4 if they're similar. 9 times 4, 3 times 13. 9 times 4 is 36. 3 times 13 is 39, therefore they are not similar figures. So the brownie I cut is not a similar figure to the pan of brownies. There you have it, that's similar figures. So remember, similar figures have corresponding sides that are proportional and corresponding angles that are congruent. I hope you enjoyed our lesson today and that you'll come back and join me at The Magic of Math. Please subscribe to my channel and sign up to receive notifications for future videos. And I hope you'll continue on with this playlist. Have a great day.